Yo, what's good guys? It's Kane One from Hijo de Ramon Music Library and we're back with another installment of a sample breakdown. Um, today's episode is long overdue. Um, like I said in the previous video, I'm in the process of just kind of like thinking of ideas to keep this YouTube channel going, growing. Um, also too with HDR and the store itself, I'm gonna be super consistent trying to drop at least one product or one pack every month. Um, varying from a full composition pack, a loop pack, some collaborations, um, and more like toolkit stuff, so like loops and stuff and like one shots. But yeah, let's just jump right into the sample breakdown. We're gonna be covering the uh, a sample off the new pack, Solaris. The sample is called No Es Un Sueño, which translates to not a dream. Uh, quick little background on it. It's basically just my take on an 80s uh, synth rock, AOR, yacht rock vibe. Think of like uh, Steely Dan, Journey, um, Asia, so that so that type of vibe. So like a lot of guitars, um, synths, uh, classic rock drums, electric pianos, and a bunch of other shit. So we're gonna jump right into each layer and break down everything that I did. Um, so yeah, let's do it. All right. So for this sample, um, pretty much started the idea with uh, these keys. So just kind of like a classic 80s type of progression. My favorite go-to like 80s plugin is this Gospel Musicians FM Tines, which is essentially a collection of 80s inspired keyboards. Um, tons of cool presets, uh, layering options. Uh, so yeah, I just went with the one called Signature Full Tine. Sounds dope, it worked. Um, and then I went to the Prophet 6 and created this ARP. And to kind of give it a little bit more like atmosphere and vibe, uh, favorite go-to right now for uh, tape echo is this Stardust 201. Crazy, amazing. Uh, the built-in chorus, really good. I have pretty much everything turned on. Um, echo volume is pretty low. The reverb's about uh, about a quarter up, and then the chorus is like right in the middle. Um, it just sounds really, really good. Um, so let's play the keys with that ARP just to kind of give you an idea of like what those two sound like. And then I got this little turnaround part at the end to kind of bring it back into itself right around here. So yeah, just like those classic stabs. And I, I, I end up layering a bunch of stuff on top of that just to kind of enhance that. But so yeah, uh, the next part I added was this uh, Fender Rhodes. Um, I don't think I used my real Rhodes. I ended up using the Korg SV2 patch that, that I have that emulates like the Fender Rhodes. Um, and I'll play that for you. So there's that. For that, I pretty much just ran it through the hollow room, which you guys already know I'm a big fan of. The built-in FLEQ Stardust Tape Echo once again to give it like that ambient sound. And the reason why I stacked that Fender Rhodes on top of those FM keys is because together they just kind of beef up the sound. So instead of kind of doubling the same sound on top of each other, uh, I wanted to add another keyboard sound that was just slightly different to kind of give it a little bit more texture and fill up the space a little bit. Um, so I'll play those two just keyboards stacked on top of each other right now. So you see, they all just kind of like work together to create kind of like this really nice ambient and like spacey tone. 
Um, so yeah, for the next part, I ended up adding a base, a synth base from the Prophet 6 for processing. Um, I ended up doing nothing. This is actually straight out the Prophet 6. So again, very simple. I didn't want to get too like jazzy or too complicated. So I kept it, you know, like single notes um, and kind of thinking, putting my, my brain in that era of music um, where these guys were kind of like, all they had were like the Prophet 5. Um, they would have like a Moog, maybe like a Jupiter. Uh, so just kind of like keeping that in mind of what those guys might have had in the studio at that time and finding things in my arsenal that could, um, uh, match those tones. So I have the Prophet 6 that would kind of emulate the Prophet 5. Um, and the next part I added was the drums to kind of get a groove going. And for the drums, this is just a drum break that I found. It's like a rock, 80s rock vibe. Um, I'll play it for you. I'll play everything together so far that I have. Yeah, so, and also, this is kind of where I found myself kind of just jamming out to this loop, trying to find what other elements I can add on top to create like a melody. Um, and around the time that I started this sample, I, I actually ended up buying a Stratocaster. Um, American Professional 2. Um, I'm a lefty, so it's a left-handed version. And been practicing like single note stuff, just trying to get proficient at it. Uh, I feel like I got a long way to go, but I ended up adding some guitar layers with the very, <laughs> with a little bit of skill that I've been able to develop over the last few weeks. I've been able to kind of add stuff to this uh, to make it sound legit. And as far as effects, I'm basically going from the guitar into a uh, tube screamer. If you guys can see that. Let it focus. Anyways, it's a tube screamer, badass. It makes it sound nasty it's got cool overdrive i know that they have like another pedal i don't know uh this company ibanez probably makes like the real thing like the bigger version but i bought the mini version uh sounds great and then going into the uad uh 65 reverb amp the dream um amazing really really dope and what i do basically is i go directly into this and i have the output pretty low and then the volume of the amp all the way up and I just play with the different amp models here maybe add a little bit of spring reverb um, and I boost all the way <laughs> trebles pretty much all the way bass is all the way um, and this thing gets fucking nasty uh, so this is what I what I use for my tone and this is an example of some of those uh, guitar lines that I was able to play Really simple stuff. Um, and then in postal, like in editing, I love the NS1 from Waves, uh, just to help clean up some of those tones and like the, the noise in the background. I went through a whole fucking trial and error trying to get rid of noise, but apparently that's just guitar. Um, but to cope with it, the NS1 has been working miracles. Um, chorus from Arteria, amazing. The VC2 a to kind of control some of those dynamics stereo shaper you know just kind of open things up a little bit uh eq nothing crazy there take out some of the lows valhalla room and yeah and then there's another part right here more just more guitar shit 
And there, basically, I'm just playing different octaves of the same line and some harmonies, um, just to kind of build it up and make it sound more like thick, I guess. And then for that, I think I processed it very much the same. Yeah, so it's all the same effects. And then one of like the little details of this sample that I felt kind of helped the groove was this um, this plucking, like this uh, palm muting on, on the guitar. It's been a, it took me a while to kind of get comfortable with it, but I feel like once I nailed it down and I was able to record this, it really helped get that groove going and made it sound like in my eyes or my ears legit. So I'll play that for you. And I'm just plucking the same like bass note uh, to help carry that groove. And I'll play everything in context right now so you get an idea of what those plucks actually do. So simple, so simple, but I feel like it does a lot for the sample. Um, and processing those, I think, very similar. Oh, so transient master, because again, because they're plucks, I didn't want them to be too airy or too roomy, so I kind of used it just to kind of get that tail to be a lot tighter. Um, EQ some of the lows out, brighten it up a little bit, and then the Stardust tape echo on top um, for that chorus and like a little bit of delay. Um, let's see, what else did I add? Oh, and then for that turnaround part, I ended up adding this. So that guitar uh, lead is basically all of the pedals that I showed you, the Dream, all turned up with the Tube Screamer. And then to get like that wobble effect, that's with the, uh, with that, um, the treble arm on the actual guitar just like playing with that thing and just like making it scream and making it like sound like it's moving you know um and just kind of letting it be loose as if someone was you know legit playing that on stage and they were just going crazy with it and i feel like at the end of that that loop it brings it back around in a really really cool way um and there's another layer here for that Essentially, another one that's very similar, but just a higher octave. So stacked on top of each other, you get this. And with that, you know, just really embracing like the imperfections as far as like the noise, a little bit of clipping that happens, but you know, just it, in my eyes, it really helped to make the sample special and make it sound more rock. Um, then I also added like this uh, vocal texture here And that's just me going like, and then running it through a plate reverb. Any plate reverb will work. I think I ended up using the Rev 2, or not the Rev 2, the um, the Rev plate from Arteria. Yeah, it already bounced. I don't have the effects, but just the plate. It's got a pretty long tail, but then I cut it off. Um, the next thing I added was, I think these are the chimes. And I actually just bought a real set of uh, wind chimes. Um, I wanna say it's about maybe a little over a foot long. It's not like the super big model, but uh, it sounds great. I just kind of like run my fingers through it and it, you know, it gives me like, like those chime sounds. No real rhyme or reason why, I just kind of did it because I felt like it added more of like a dreamy sound. Uh, processing those was pretty straightforward. I think I took out low end, compressed it, and then room reverb, and then I pitched it down a little bit. Um, they tend to be a little high up there with the octaves, and um, it just it didn't seem to work. It was super high pitched, so I brought it down, and it, it fit a lot better. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll play what I've talked through so far. Uh, we have yet to go through the vocals, but let's just uh, let's listen through what we got.
but the sample so far. Um, I think after at this point, I kind of let the sample chill for a little bit. Uh, I remember not working on it so much. I uh, came back to it maybe a few days later and decided to add some like uh, synthesizer parts. And I went straight to the OB6. I got this patch that I made that I've been using on a lot of samples lately. I feel like it's just really dreamy, really organic, um, doesn't sound so stale. And it's got a lot of movement that the OB6 synthesizer provides naturally. Like the oscillators, the way they like move around, it's, it's crazy. So yeah, it's a very simple sound, but I, the, the texture that it does have, it, it blends in well in the mix. Uh, to give you an example, some of that movement, I think this is layer right here has it. Very subtle, but being like a synth lover, anything that has like movement, it sounds like super analog, man, I love that shit. So I had that in the uh, beginning part of the sample and I guess for context, let's go through and listen to that part of the sample, see what that synth actually does for the composition. So yeah, you know, it kind of helps, again, carry that groove. Um, and now my favorite part of the entire sample is the vocals. Now the vocals were a challenge because this literally took about a day of finding lyrics, singing the lyrics, which I'm not a professional singer by any means, but you know, I think my lack of experience with singing kind of lends to like that rock band from the eighties recorded in the garage and shit, nothing professional, but it has character. Um, and let's just play the vocals. A second chance to prove your love to me. But it's too late, too late, too late. A second chance to prove your love to me. But it's too late. Too late, too late. So yeah, um, I did run that vocal or those vocal takes through reverb. So it's been essentially the same recordings ran through plate. Um, again, I think I used the Arteria Rev plate, um, but for like the vocal line, you know, I obviously recorded it once and recorded it a second time, a third time, and just building up layers and then doing some harmonies on certain parts. Um, and again, for like harmonies, I'm still learning how to train my voice to be able to get those right. Um, and even with like my vocal editing, you'll hear there's a lot of noise and clicking and like a lot of little weird artifacts in the vocal recording, but I don't know if it's laziness or like la laziness as it is to why I leave those in there or is it like texture? I don't know how to describe it, um, but I leave a lot of that stuff in there. Um, I just feel like it doesn't really take away from the sample. And if anything, again, kind of sounds like it was recorded in a garage or something. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so I play the vocals with the reverb to give you an idea of what all that sounds like together. A second chance to prove your love to me. But it's too late, too late, too late. And then with everything together. A second Oops. Everything together. A second chance. Now this, this sample 
has a format. It has a, a reason why I have it structured the way I have it structured. Um, when I was digging for samples and looking for shit to chop up, when I was making beats, a lot of these samples had the chorus right before the big break. Um, and with this sample, I wanted to emulate that. I wanted to have like that sample that had like the chorus with the drums, everything kind of had everything built up in the beginning. And then it had a release, like a break where it would be the most, you know, the, like the best part to sample. And the way I was able to kind of break that up was by removing the drums and kind of letting things breathe a little bit. And then that's when the chimes come in, um, the vocals change, they're more, they're not lyrics, they're more like ad-libs or like ooze. Um, and it just kind of provides an opportunity for a beat maker to come in, chop up that intro so that they can use and then have the break where the drums come in, you know, just like that classic format. And I'll play that second section for you right here where it kind of like goes into that break. I did bring some of those lyrics back into this break. I re-sang them. So this is what these extra layer parts are. It's just a way to kind of tie back into the chorus or like the chorus part. It's too late. And then this. No more second chances. It's, too late. it's just a way to tie those two parts together, but still feel like it's different. Um, and I also added a another guitar lead. And with that, it's the same treatment, you know, with the, the dream turned up all the way in that two screamer going to get like that nasty sound. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it for all the elements. And the rest was just kind of arranging stuff and moving things around to create essentially three different parts of the sample. You'll have your, your intro, um, this break part and then kind of like a secondary break where I bring back or I bring back the like the OB6 synth which sounds like this <laughs> And the reason I, I did that and basically the way I did it by by making that second section is by removing the chimes uh, removing the ooze and then those other vocal parts that I showed you. So essentially it's just almost the chorus without the vocals and the drums. Um, and again, it's just for variation for the sole purpose of giving the producer that has the sample some flexibility if they don't have the stems. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. The sample is pretty straightforward, at least in my eyes. I had a very clear vision for it. Um, and I think that's something that was really important is having having the inspiration, having the idea. Um, I knew exactly what I was going for and kind of had that as reference when I was creating. It's like, I need a guitar, so pull out the guitar. I had a certain tone in my head. I just had to make the plugins and the pedals do what was already in my head. Um, I was very picky and precise with the synthesizer tones that I wanted, the, like the type of keyboards that I, I knew I was gonna use and the type of drums. Um, you know, all the right ingredients in my head, I just had to find a way to put it together in the DAW. Um, I feel like I, in my eyes, I feel like I nailed it as far as like that, that era, that tone. It's one of my, my favorite samples of late 2022. Um, very proud and very happy that I was able to release us in, in the first release of the year. Hope you guys enjoy it. Um, if you guys haven't picked up the new Pex or Lotties, make sure to go pick it up. The link is in the bio. Uh, compositions and stems are available for this sample and nine others. Um, I plan on doing more breakdowns. I got more packs. I got a lot more shit on the way. Um, and thank you so much for the support. All the love you guys have been showing since me coming back. It means the world. It means a lot. Um, I'm excited to keep getting better and keep providing more quality shit for you guys. Um, until next time, you guys take care. Peace.